And here's how you get started using a rag. And this is a rag that can be a disposable rag or something that you want to launder after. It doesn't really matter. Just get a good cloth, get a good rag. You also want to get out your deglosser and even get yourself one of these little kitchen scrubbies. And that's going to help you to get around and get all of these things agitated and moved off of any surface, including, uh, again, your kitchen counters, your cabinets, anything that you think has been exposed to human oils or airborne grease or anything that might have settled on your piece before you paint it. You want to make sure and remove it. And this will help you get that done. And the next thing you want to do is take a dry cloth and you're going to go in there and wipe that off and then you're ready to paint. It's that simple. There's no sanding, nothing else that you need to do other than just get ready to paint. So I'm going to show you some great things to use using our tool trio. You're going to be able then to paint these spindles with ease and I'm going to show you how we're going to do a two-tone effect and give this more of maybe even a metal feeling. We're going to use our color called truffle which looks very much like oil rub bronze. And I'm going to use the True Applicator. This is a great handy tool and it's going to help us to put on this first quick coat onto the spindles. I'm just going to use the, it, the little built-in handle here. I'm going to load my sponge, pour it out here in a paper plate. I'm going to use that right there. Let's see if I can get a whole covering of that. I'm going to give us this right here to start working with. Just going to take the tool tree, the little applicator, and just run it right down this spindle. That easy. Just kind of turn. Right. We're going to get on what we call the ugly coat. This is not going to look fully covered. That way we can get two coats on it with you here on the live. And I want to be able to share with you how great that's going to look with that second coat going on. So we'll get this one on first so it can dry. And that's how painless that is to do that quick. This spindle's a little loose, so I can just turn it right here with me. It's working with me. It's Friday. It's working with me, not against me. I love it. So there you go. That got on the first one. You can go back and light stipple that to make sure you don't have any runs and get all that to cover up really nicely. So we'll move on to the next one. So that's how easy it is. You can paint spindles and chairs. So just using the little stippling motion is going to keep again from runs happening. I'm going to get right down in all those little turns and all those little nooks and crannies that are here. You don't have to hurt yourself. You can just use this to its uh, best advantage and just turn and just let it do all the work for you. Just lightly, lightly, lightly press. When you get in a bind and you can't get your um, roller in there or your piece in there, grab your little roller. You can load it up lightly. That way you can get back in there in those areas that your hand can't fit. And I normally don't use this roller as a roller, but I will in this circumstance. Because that's going to let me get right in there on this square piece. A little tight spot. Yeah, why not take advantage of that? But this little foam roller is going to help us get that done. Just so all the tools in the tool trio are going to be really helpful to get this project done with ease. I'm going to do brush and roll right on this mill post. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Get it on here and just get on our first coat so you can see how Coliseum is going to look here and the two-tone effect we're going to We're using the brush and roll technique to make this process fast and easy. Simply brush on a full coat of paint, then using the dry roller, lightly roll through the wet paint. Coliseum has a nice gray undertone underneath and that's going to help pull all of those pretty white doors that she has around the room. We're not getting rid of all the oak, we're just getting rid of a touch of it here. If you pick too stark of a white, it's going to stand out like a neon sign in your room. So this one is the perfect shade that looks great with her gray walls and doesn't look too new. So those things, if you go to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot or you go into a store where no one's helping you and you see all this 
wonderful selection of colors, it's almost mind-boggling. So we try to put together the best 30 colors. Each of them, again, has a reason for being there. So we try to give you that selection and make it easy for you to say, hey, that's why I want that color of white right there. So we have some new people on with us, so walk them through brush and roll that you're doing. Kind of you, walk them through you, you know, it's not, a, it's not something necessary, but it's just a great way to do it. So people say, oh, I just wouldn't want to use that paint because I have to stipple and I have to do all of this extra step. Believe me, it's not an extra step. It's a step you'll want to take because remember, we're not using a primer. We're not using any kind of a hide primer here. We're just putting directly the paint on here. So what happens when you brush, when you're brushing on paint, every time you take a swipe through the paint, you're putting the little lines through the paint. So maybe you leave that and you didn't go back and do a roll back through it, okay? The next time you put the next layer on, those lines don't necessarily line up again. So you're gonna have these highs and low marks in your paint. So if you'll brush on a good coat, light stipple over or light roll over it using just a very light pressure, just like that. You guys saw me roll my face before. Same thing, it doesn't come off. There's nothing on here. This is dry, it's got some paint on it, residual paint from rolling through it. It's not like it's got a lot of paint on it. It's just got a little bit. So it's going right back through. It just kind of makes the paint lines just lay down. So then the next time you go back over it with that brush, nothing has to line up to cover. You see, you see what I'm saying? So it's not a thing we're having to do. The paint would work just the same without it. it. Just makes it easier on you. And that's the main thing. And that's why we teach brush and roll or using this true applicator to stipple. It does exactly the same thing.